Let's take a look at the updated drawings in SOLIDWORKS 2016. The first improvement we're going to look at here is flag notes. So here we have uh, some general notes listed and each number has a border around it indicating that it's a flag note. Then we have on our drawing a balloon with the same border and number um, which refers to that flag note. So the balloon number four here refers to that flag note there. Okay, now in SOLIDWORKS 2015 and previous there was no real intelligence behind these flag notes. In 2016 there is. So first off we'll have a look at creating a flag note. We just select our number, define a border to go around it, so we'll have a triangle in this instance, and then we just add it to the flag note, flag note bank. We then want to apply that as a balloon. Uh, we go into our balloon command, choose the flag note bank, choose which one we want and then just drop it in the relevant place on our drawing sheet. So the intelligence comes when you want to change um, a flag note border as an example. So if I double click on the notes, change that four from a box to say a square circle, you'll see wherever that note is used, it updates with that change. Also what's quite nice here is that if you hover over one of these flag notes, it tells you what the flag note is. So we can see that's referred to sheet two for mountain hole locations dimensions. So imagine you've got these notes on your first sheet, but you've got quite a large amount of sheets in your drawing. Um, it's always nice to, other, rather than having to go back to the first sheet, just hover over the flag note detail like so. The next improvement we see is to stacked balloons. So it's now very easy for us to manipulate this. I can take this balloon and just shift drag it out of the stack like so. I can shift drag them back in and I can also shift drag to reorder them. I do have the option to sort the stack numerically and I can even drag in to the stack um, flag note balloons as well. The next improvement we see is to notes. So when you place a note down on the left hand side within your property manager you have the option to link to a property. Now in previous releases it was only possible for you to link to the top level model within your drawing view. Now you can link to any component property or any sub-assembly property within that top level assembly. The way you do it is you select from this drop down selected component or other drawing view and then you select which component you want to link to and then all the properties that you see will be relevant to the component you've selected within this box. And there's our node place down. If we move to the second sheet, a small welcome, welcome enhancement here is our with the ability to change the scale very quickly. So you're probably aware already that if you want to change the sheet scale, you right click on the sheet, you go to properties, and then you type in a new value within this, this box. We've now uh, adjusted that so we can get from the status bar, a pop-up menu where we can very quickly and easily change the scale. Another small improvement is when you're dimensioning from a vertex. If I was to click in space here or make the wrong selection, I'd have to start that tool all over again. Um, now I can click outside and click on something by accident and it, it behaves like all the other dimensions that we, we add. So it's just been brought more in line. Another small but welcome improvement is with this auxiliary view and specifically the labels on them. Now it was basically impossible for us to remove a different position. Now you can see that it behaves more like the section view labels where we can just drag them to the position that we want them to be in. If you need to create a border, the whole process has been made much easier in SOLIDWORKS 2016. We're gonna just go in and edit our sheet format and then I'm just gonna to toggle off the visibility of our title block. So we have a border there that's already been created um, but we're going to use the new tool which is the automatic border wizard to create our border. So the first thing it will allow us to do is delete any entities that we don't want. 
which is going to be everything that I've selected there. As soon as I click next, the border is automatically created for me. Now it creates the zones, so i.e. the columns and the rows, um, and we can define whether we want them to be spaced 50 millimeters from the center or evenly sized. And then as I start to add rows and columns, you can see it equally spaces them along the length of the border, like so. We can also adjust our margins, either by manually dragging them or keying in a, a numeric value to get them correct. We can adjust the line thickness and the line um, style. We also have the options to adjust the uh, divider lines as well. So again, thickness, style, um, and width. So as you can see, I can change the central divider as an example. What we'll do here is just reduce the thickness of those lines. We can optionally choose to show columns or rows and we can control the label offset if need be. We can also control the font. Now the last section of this is for us to add a margin mask. Now to do this all we do is click the plus button that brings up this grey square on the sheet. We can then just position that on our sheet and if I now press OK it will create the border for me and where I've had my margin mask it will just remove the row labels, column labels and dividers. The reason that you might want to do that is if you have uh, notes on the outside of your borders. So if I bring back my title block as an example here, you can see that I have some notes on the outside of the border and we've used our margin mask so they don't overlap each other. Finally we have a new tool called performance evaluation which is available on the evaluate toolbar in drawings which just allows us to um, spot any problems if you have uh, issues with rebuild times in drawings it will just sort of break it down and uh, report back to you where there are possibly um, problems with your drawing sheets. Okay so just to summarize what we've seen there we have link flag notes with balloons we can allow stack balloons to be rearranged we can link notes to properties of sub-assemblies and components. We can change the sheet scale from the status bar. We have an automatic border wizard tool and we have a drawing performance evaluation tool. We now move to Ed for SOLIDWORKS inspection.